Thunder J. Freddy, Tokyo, USA, Pro Wrestling Worldwide, Pro Wrestling Law, and you are listening to the Working Fans Podcast. Yeah! Alright folks, you're listening to the Working Fans Podcast. This is Dave, along with my producer Joe. And we have on us uh, as a guest today, top independent wrestler, Jay Freddy. Jay, how you doing? What's going on? Good to be here. Awesome, man. Jay, for anyone who doesn't know, why don't you give us a little background? How'd you break in and uh, what are some of your influences? Right after high school, I knew I always wanted to be a professional wrestler. I mean, I've always known I wanted to be one since I was a kid. And at the time, I was in my senior year of high school. I was looking up tools to wrestle at or to train at. And um, my original plan was to go to Ring of Honor School in Philadelphia. But then a company around New York called 2CW started to form. And I saw that the school, that the trainer was trained by uh, Killer Kowalski. And obviously, you know, Killer Kowalski is a legend in this business. So yeah. it, was only an, it was only an hour from my house. So I went to a 2CW show. And I talked to some of the people after the show. And then December of 2006 is when I started my journey in this business. Nice, nice. Now, what about some of your influence as far as wrestlers go? Influences, you know, me being like a shorter, stockier guy, definitely like a Dynamite Kid or the British Bulldog or Dean Malenko, Bret Hart, Owen Hart. Definitely like those, like, then when I really got into like Japanese wrestling, like guys like Misawa, Muda, you know, just guys who are, you know, a little bit different from everybody, but at the same time, you know, being a wrestler and having a lot of that, you know, especially for being in Japan, getting kind of like, Tight cast into that Japan like esque role. Like, I definitely try, try to draw a lot of influence from guys you know, like Dynamite, Malenko, and stuff like that. Now, you spoke of Japanese wrestling, and a lot of wrestlers kind of dream in working in Japan. How did you come about working over there, and what was your experience like in Japan? Uh, Japan is definitely my home away from home. Like, uh, I'm very excited to be returning there very soon. 2CW had a show with Tajiri on it back in 2014, and at the time, Tajiri had a company called WNC, uh, Wrestling New Classic, over in Japan. And when he was booked over here in the States for two days for uh, Living on the Edge weekend, he brought over two of his young boys, um, one being Usuke Kodama and the other being uh, Ryan Fujiwara, a guy from Australia who Fujiwara gave him the last name, you know, because of the art bar and working with him. And the promoter at UCW knew I've always wanted to go to Japan. Like, I, I talked about it, I talked about it, I talked about it. So I had matches with both of his young boys that weekend. And especially the match with Kodama was like the one. And after like they were interested, and they're actually going to bring a 2CW group over at WNC for, uh, for like an invasion angle. And yeah, we we're going to start a, a program with them. And a week before we were supposed to fly out, we got the news that Tajiri folded the company. Huh. And they were like, oh, they were like, oh, you're kidding me. And wow. then basically like a lot of those guys got absor- absorbed into uh, Wrestle One, uh, KG Muda's company. So about, you know, kind of just keeping hmm. contacts and everything. And then a year later, an opportunity came about where... Um, so Jerry was booking with Russell One and had more of an office role and asked if I wanted to go over for a learning excursion. I said, absolutely. So my first tour, I was there six months. And it's crazy because like, we debuted right at Corican Hall, which is crazy to me. You know, obviously, if you follow Japanese wrestling or any wrestling, Corican Hall is such an historic thing. You know, it's had everybody in there. And we were the opening six-man tag match. And at the time, they had the... They had a stage and a ramp would go to the ring, like the old like WCW style, so and like the old like New Japan style. So I remember we heard our music and we walked out and the lasers are going off and the smoke and it was a sold out show because the main event was the Great Muda, Tajiri, and the Great Kabuki all on one team. You know, like the the team missed. You know? so, yeah, the place was sold out. I just remember walking to the ring, getting in the ring, getting on the buckle. I'm just going like, holy cow! Like, what a way to start. Right, yeah. I was just going to ask you, like, that had to be a trip uh, meeting Muda, I imagine, even, right? Oh, yeah. Like I said, I mean, obviously, he's a, he's a god, you know, and not, not only in, like, Japan, but here in America, you know. And I remember the first interaction I ever had with him, I was in a tournament. It was the Road to Keiji Muto tournament where the winner got to face Muto at Cork and Hall, and I made it to the semis. And I remember after the opening match I had, he was sitting like at a table by the entrance and I remember walking back and he looked at me and he said, good match. And I went, oh my God. Huh. You know, like, like, he, like this, is, this is crazy. Yeah. And then after like getting to like the opportunities to like 
go out with the sponsors and go out with him to like a Yakiniku or a Korean barbecue place and sit and talk to him. You know, he's a pretty, pretty genuine good dude. Yeah, I mean, I grew up on Muda myself in the NWA era, you know, hanging there, wrestling with Stinks. I'm definitely a big Muda fan. I'm just uh, out of curiosity, how many dates a week are you working roughly uh, right now? And like, what are some of the other promotions you're working for? And the big ones I'm wrestling for, you know, obviously uh, Beyond Wrestling, you know, the, the Uncharted Territory on every Thursday night on IWTV. It's been huge for me. But like, I've been, you know, like that's a big one. Uh, Limitless Wrestling up in Maine's been good. ESW out in Buffalo has been really well to me. Uh, Excite down in Binghamton. Uh, basically, just been kind of trying to keep busy as much as I can. You know, like two shows a week. You know, obviously a little bit more for there. You know, like obviously like trying to branch out a little bit more outside the Northeast. But you know, I I always still like to do like you know the smaller indies, or, like the smaller little regional ones. You know, you know, because obviously you want to stay sharp. You know, and keep wrestling. You want to stay in a ring. You know, so. Yeah. But yeah, I try to keep as busy as I can. But like, as far as like the big two, I'd say like Beyond and Limitless right now. And definitely looking forward to going back up to uh, Canada and maybe getting involved with Smash or C4 up there as well. Absolutely. Nice. Now, Jay, we were really lucky to land this interview because actually for the last couple weeks, the thing that I've been bringing up that I've been most excited about in wrestling are the matches you've had with Brandon Thurston. Now, this week didn't necessarily end up like I thought. But I think the matches you guys have put on on Uncharted Territory, it's a nice newer rivalry that I've seen. And I wanted to hear you talk a little bit about Beyond and about Brandon Thurston as well. A lot of people don't really know the backstory with Thurston. Like, me and him have known each other well over a decade. Obviously, he started out in Buffalo. I started in Syracuse, and it was like a name. You hear each other's names in conversation, you know what I mean? Like... There was a time, like, around, like, that 05, 06, you know, time, that's when, like, okay, there's these two young guys who are breaking in, they're having these matches, you know, and finally, with Uncharted Territory, so we've always just kind of crossed paths, so there, we got booked in that first match with each other, and obviously we have a very similar style of working, you know, and we both like the Japanese style, we both like English style, you know, and it's, you go in there, you know, it's going to be a chess match with somebody like that, and that first match is, you know, it was our first match on Uncharted Territory, and I haven't been back with Beyond in a minute, I had a couple injuries that kind of kept me out, so I knew for me, especially now with the explosion of wrestling on so many media platforms, and, you know, there's so much of there out there, so much of it out there, and Uncharted Territory's got a lot of buzz, you know, and I've been with Beyond Wrestling on and off since 2014, so I kind of took that opportunity as like, you know, I've been doing this for 13 years, still is like a, a make or break moment, you know what I mean? Where it's like, all right, I'm going to go out, i got to have this match, and we're either going to go up from here, or we got to go back to the drawing board and figure it out. But that first match came off so well, and so hard hitting, and then I was fortunate to get the win to end of the second match, and then, you know, Brandon obviously being... I'll give the credit where it's due. He's intelligent. You know, he studied up on the tape, and then he, he pulled out the second one, and then out of nowhere, I could just just change it. And I don't know what's going on with him, but obviously, you know, the last two times you've seen each other, he's kind of been a dirty little trick. So, uh, yeah, I definitely, it's, it's on now. You know, this is, this is personal. It's, this is more than just seeing who's the best in the region now. It's, these are two guys who have been involved with the upstate New York wrestling scene for well over a decade. So now it's like, who, who's the king of the mountain at this point? I know a lot of the times on this podcast, we talk about having day jobs and how we're kind of fitting this in. And Uncharted Territory last week, I knew you guys were having the rematch. So I'm getting all my stuff done at night so I can sit down and watch the match. And then when it ended like it did, I was like, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> but I know it's only going to lead to something better. And you've had a lot of solid matches and beyond. That's probably around where you first caught my eye. And you, every time I've seen you, it's been so, a solid effort, hands down. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's always my goal in any company, you know, whether it be a Beyond Wrestling or a Limitless or even like a local ESW or... PWR in Pennsylvania or wherever, you know, if I'm if I'm there, I only know one one you know one speed and that's a hundred. You know, I only know one effort, that's max effort. You know, it doesn't matter who I'm wrestling. Like you're 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 gonna get the best that I can give you that night. 
you know. And this whole thing with Thurston, like I said, I've noticed, you know, especially he's, he's, trying, he's trying to play mind games, but at the same time, I know how to tap into his brain, and it's been working. He's basically giving me what I want, and that's another match, you know. Like, he's for weeks he was saying he was dumb with me, he was saying, you know, I'm over it, and then I know, like, I can see it in his eyes when he, st- he comes in the ring and I stare right at him. I know he, I know he knows he can't beat me. And obviously, look what he's resorted to. So... Now, Jay, just out of curiosity, who are some of the people that have been really good to you and kind of helped you along in the business that maybe you weren't expecting, you know, besides bringing you in, like, as you've been wrestling? As far as a, um, probably my, my big brother in pro wrestling has definitely got to be Eddie Edwards. <laughs> I remember the first time I wrestled him, I was only six months into wrestling. Wow. And I was, I was originally in a six-man tag that night. And uh, Eddie was supposed to wrestle Antonio Thomas that night. And the night before, Antonio Thomas got hurt. So I'm at the building, and the promoter of 2CW, his name's Josh, he came up to me. And Josh is very joking, you know. Like, he would come up to me, like, hey, how you doing, buddy? And I'm like, I'm doing all right. You know, he's like, how do you feel about your sixth man tonight? I'm like, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm loosening up. He goes, well, you're wrestling Eddie Edwards tonight. Good luck. <laughs> I thought he, I was like, okay. I, mean, I thought he was kidding. You know, right. Was a joke. And then I, I got to the back, and then I saw the, the lineup, and I saw that Antonio, Antonio Thomas' name was crossed out. My name was written on a sharp. It was like, huh, okay, you know. And then I just remember wrestling Eddie, and that was probably the, you know, when you're young into wrestling, that's kind of like the, the test, I guess. But definitely earned his respect after that, and he's been a guy who's really... I, if I need anything, I can go talk to him. You know, if any advice I can send him a match, he can send me back his two cents. And obviously it shows how I work. Him and I are very similar, you know. Another guy is uh, Davey Richard. Basically, I, I was kind of like the Wolves, like, young boy for a while. Yeah. For a little bit. Because uh, I remember going to Ring of Honor, watching a live event, and that's when Davey first came into the company. I was kind of like, wow, you know, like, you know, this dude's great. You know, and I could relate, you know, being shorter and, stock here or whatever and how we did the same influence and then like I said the Wolves were the two CW champions at the time and Eddie went over to Noah for a tour and uh, I knew Davey was coming in I looked at and again there was one of those situations where I went to the promoter and I said hey um, Davey's coming in singles I need this you know because at the time it was around 2010 so so I've only been a few years into wrestling at that time Davey was red hot you know that's when he was wrestling Seth Rollins, Tyler Black, you know, for the title, and, yeah. ev- and everybody. So I was, like, trying to seize that moment. It was like, okay, you know, like, this is where, well, you know, another situation like I said earlier, this is where we either go back to the drawing board or this is where I can see mentally if I can do this, you know. And that match was probably the most brutal physical match I've ever had. The building was 105 degrees with the body heat in there. And we won a good 25 minutes, and I actually picked the win up. And after the fact, you know, Davey invited me out to dinner, and then next thing you know, I'm on Ring of Honor TV wrestling Eddie Edwards in the five-minute wolf hunt, you know? And then it was Davey giving me that door to go to Ring of Honor there when they were doing the HD Net TV and really, you know, riding with him and training with him in a gym and learning from those guys, you know? So those two are definitely two huge influences on me as far as in wrestling. Um, a peer I love traveling with, Dick Justice is probably, like, my best friend in nice. the business and, and outside of wrestling. Like, uh, I just hung out with him here over the weekend. I haven't seen him in a minute. Him and I have been on the road so much together where it's pretty funny when we can complete each other's sentences, you know, where if one starts a conversation, the other one's picking it right up, or, or we're both on the same wavelength, you know, and that's just – and in this business, you know, like you said, you have a lot of acquaintances. You travel a lot of people, but – you really have a select few of people you really can call like a close personal friend and he's like he's one and those three are definitely like the big three for me i was just curious i was watching a match with you uh, the other night in preparation for this and i noticed you have a tattoo on your hand is there any significance to that yes uh that represents my grandfather oh cool About, yeah like two years ago my grandfather died of cancer he's 88 years old you know it's a long, t- long life you know and mm. I got it. Like I was gonna go up on a Wednesday to see him, you know, because we all knew it was, you know, time was short. I got home on Tuesday morning. I was rest. I, I was actually doing an extra spot for WWE, and I got in New Jersey, and I got home Tuesday morning, and I said, uh, 
you know, I, I was I was really going to crash. I drove all night. I was going to go right to the bed. But I said, you know what? I, I'm going to go see him. And then I went over and I saw him. I sat alone with him, held his hand, you know, said what, you know, said my piece, you know, said everything. And then literally like a minute after I pulled out the driveway, he went. So I was like the last one to, to see him alive, you know what I mean? Or in a yeah. live state, I guess. So, and then with the grandkids, we had no idea he did this. I was uh, like four weeks later, my dad sends me a text. He goes, hey, your grandfather left you something. And I still keep the envelope because he wrote my name out right on it. And I still keep it. And uh, he had in there a savings spot that he started from when I was born. You know, and we had no idea he did this for the grandkids. So I was like, oh, my God. So I cashed it in. And then I obviously took some of the money from that. And I got the ink done. So that's, that's what that represents. Wow. So it sounds like he was really important to you. And that that tattoo yeah. was really a way of honoring him. Yeah, like he was the, yeah, he was the first one in my family, you know, to ever have a home. You know, like he came up, obviously, back in the 20s and 30s, you know, like rough times with the Depression and all that. And he uh, was a family man through and through. He uh, met my grandmother. He's actually a, a semi-professional basketball player. And actually a lot of, a lot of teams, like the actual, the Boston Celtics and the uh, Syracuse Nationals, which are now the 76ers, Basically, we're scouting him and offering him a contract. Hmm. He played. He played on a lot of the traveling teams in the school. Because like, you see his old scrapbook. Like he played against like all the gimmick teams too. Like there's a team of like traveling nuns they play. Or, uh, no kidding. Or, like the Cincinnati Redheads, which are actually in the basketball hall of fame. They got displayed. Hmm. But at the time, you know, he he had three kids with number four on the way, and it's, it's funny because like my father's side is kind of like the Hart family. You know, like there's there's seven kids. You know, hmm. so there's a lot. And my grandfather was always traveling, doing his thing. But then my grandmother finally put her foot down. It's like it's either, it's either basketball or your family, you know. And obviously, he chose his family. And he got a job at the telephone company and went from being a grunt, you know, a laborer, to basically retiring. And when Verizon bought out Bell Telephone as regional manager, you know, so mm. he's kind of he's, he's but he also did so much for the community, you know. Like he was an Elk, was the exalted ruler of the Elks Lodge, put on like a the charity free throw shoot that a lot of places do, a lot of community events. You know, so I kind of I look at him as far as an example, as far as the to be like a kind of like to be like the man he was. You know what I mean? Like to be like to be sort of if I could be even like half the man him or like my father are. You know, I I think I'd be doing all right. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, and it's really cool that you actually got to say goodbye because near the end, like I was close with my grandma. But near the end, she went into a nursing home. So I don't think I ever really had that goodbye moment with her. It was yeah. always like, I'll see you again. But you got that finality. And it seems yeah. like it gave you a good example to go forward and emulate in the world. Exactly. That's, and that, that's, that's actually you said that. Cause I was going to say that. Like, I, you, see stuff, you see somebody like that, you know, it's kind of like, wow, like that's, that's the example as far as how to be, you know, a, a good person and good to your family and good to other people like like one thing i admired is like he he'd walk into like say like the local grocery store the local donor shop to grab donuts for camp or whatever or he'd go to like, like yeah yeah like a store but he'd walk in and he knew everybody by name huh. even if you ever met him one time you know what i mean that's something i i try to do like when i go into a locker room i always try to remember everybody and say everybody by name like you know i like, go oh, hey ace romero and Hey, you know, Ace Austin or whoever's all in there. You know what I mean? I try to acknowledge him by name. You know, so I think that's a very respectful thing. I think people remember that. Yeah, that's good core values, man. I think a lot of the that has changed in the world we live in between social media and texting. Not to go on a soapbox, but it's nice to like kind of right. keep those old schools of just you know remembering names, saying hello to people, basic politeness. Yeah. So just out of curiosity, too, one other thing I did want to ask you. Uh, do you have like a favorite opponent maybe like somebody who really brings out the best in you favorite opponent wow definitely um I, i'll write off a few names uh eddie edwards obviously number one like i said he's him and i have had dozens of matches and just you, you go in there with somebody you know your game is going to be up you know or you, you go you go to a match like that you walk away being better this keiko dama in japan like him and i wrestled for the uh Russell won a cruiserweight title in uh, Cork and Hall, and that's actually one of my proudest moments and one of my proudest matches. Tyson Dukes in Canada, wicked awesome old school 90s style wrestling match, and 
you know, like we both went out and did that very Bret Hart, Mr. Perfect, King of the Ring, SummerSlam style match. It was awesome. I'll give the devil his due, Brandon Thurston. Definitely, you know, you're going to go in there. It's going to be bell to bell action and that King's Road style of wrestling. Uh, I had a match with Rich Swan one time and it was wicked awesome. Like, I just wrestled there at Fox CSW. It was awesome. Like, I like wrestling a lot of people that are like, either similar or op- like, or a polar opposite of me. Like, for example, like, I like wrestling the heavyweights. You know, like, uh, there's a, a wrestler back in, or a couple years ago, it was uh, Brute Van Slyke uh, in New York. I liked wrestling him, because it was like that old school, like, Stan Hansen versus Dynamite, or like, even like a Brett versus like Diesel, you know, or Sid, you know? Like, sure. Like, that's the story. You know, like, I love wrestling the heavyweights or guys twice my size, you know, or even like the luchadors or guys who can do a lot of the high spots and the roles because, again, another contrast of style, you know, like, I, my job is to ground them and not let them get going. And obviously, when they get going, I got to play catch up so and chase the rabbits. So, definitely matches like that. Like I said, I like to think I'm pretty well versed as far as like what I can go in the ring with, but those are just some of the names that come to mind. Yeah, uh, one thing too, Jay, I noticed that, um, like, I love all your matches. You're very serious. You have great competitive matches. But I noticed you can do some comedy matches once in a while, too. I saw some stuff with you and um, Puff wearing a hard hat, drinking a beer. It was interesting. It was pretty good stuff. Oh, yeah. That, that was uh, the, the Sick Boys. Up yes. In, uh, Maine. Uh, basically, like, John Silver is another one of my good friends in wrestling. Because, like, me and John just click. Because, like, sometimes we just be a couple of goofballs. Yeah. And, obviously, like, they put us together and... Uh, <laughs> The promoter was like, I kind of want you guys to be like, you know, like a serious ass kicking team, you know, like the American Bulls or whatever. I'm like, okay. But then, like, sure, like, we could do that, but like, we also have personality, you know what I mean? Like, we're not just like two short, vanilla, you know, yeah. you know, wrestlers. Like, we also, like, be ourselves, you know, and, and obviously now with like, we kind of tapped into like that whole, like, bar school sports, like a lot of like, some like that goofy bro stuff. <laughs> and him and I were just ping ponging ideas off each other. Like, like I said, you know, maybe we should wear like denim vests. And he said, maybe we should wear ball caps. And then we just kept like, yeah, this is great. <laughs> you know, and then, and then obviously like we Puff got involved with being you know, like our pledge. You know what I mean? Like our frat has like pledge week and all that. So that's awesome. And obviously like, <laughs> and obviously the, the pledge is kind of, you know, messed up here and there and cost us matches. So then. You have the one frat brother who's hot at the pledge, and then you have the one that's the peacemaker trying to make everything work, and then that's where we're at right now. So we're interested to see where that story goes. Now, it sounds like you've had a lot of experience between the U.S. and Japan. What championships have you held in your time in the business? I've held the, uh, the 2CW heavyweight title, the top rope promotions heavyweight title out of Massachusetts, the Fall River area. I've held the upstate pro wrestling heavyweight title out in Rochester. A big one for me in Japan, I was uh, one third of the UWA uh, six man tag team champions with a wrestler by the name of Kuma Goro and uh, Jiro Ikemen Kurosho. Actually, he just signed to WWE. Mm. That's the name to watch out for. That kid's going to be a superstar. He's the one, if you ever follow Japan, like he's super popular. He's the one that always wears like the jacket, comes out with like the big introduction, like takes some 10 minutes to get in the ring. <laughs> like he's, he's, he's awesome. He's, he's, and he's so young too. And he's just incredible. But those are some of the titles I've held. I'll have to keep an eye out for him. Now, what was it like winning a championship in Japan? Because it's your dream to get over there. And when you're a champion there, that's got to be like extra special. Oh, I go, I go, I, I go, sure, I cried like a baby. <laughs> nice. Uh, it was awesome. Like, you, like and, and the team we beat, we beat um, Kazayashi, Shuji Kondo, and uh, Soya Manabu, so a really good team. Wow, and, some um, names. And, and there's another guy, one of my favorite favorite opponents is Kazayashi, you know, obviously being a fan of his since WCW. Yeah. But, like, getting to wrestle him, like, for my first two tours, like, I'd be in multi-man matches. Like, him and I were just married to each other as far as wrestling each other. You know, because we're like the speed of the team, like more like the the, te- the technical guys of each team. But uh, beating them guys at a is in uh, Chiba, and the crowd was like fifteen hundred and it was packed. And when we won the belts, no one expected us to win, and we won them. And then the place went nuts, and there's just like a holy cow, like this actually happened. Like I would, I would have never thought my wildest years coming from small water town New York that I'd be in Japan winning a title. Like it's insane. Yeah, and what's it like sometimes wrestling guys that you came up watching wrestling? That's got to be a bit of a mind fuck sometimes. Oh, it, it, it is. It's surreal, you know. But I, I think like once you get past the aura of it, 
you know, and really um, get going and getting comfortable, that it's like, oh, okay. Like then you just you gotta you, then you just dial it in, you know. But obviously, yeah, like you have that first moment of like, oh wow, like, this is Kasayashi, or oh my god, this is Minoru Tanaka, or like. But then obviously, you know, once you get in the ring, you know, you wipe your feet off, step between the ropes, it's go time. He's he's just another opponent at that point. Just wondering, too, uh, you've done a lot already. What are some of your goals left that you want to do in uh, wrestling? Oh, I definitely got a ton. Like I said, I mean, it's I'd love to go out to, like, PWG in California. Like, that'd be, that's definitely been on the, the bucket list. And, you know, obviously sport, like, Canada shows, like, Mexico, obviously. Europe's the hotbed right now, like, England, Germany. Like, I would just like to keep traveling the world, get better, wrestle as much as I can. And obviously now with you know, a lot of a lot of places offering contracts and on TV and stuff like that, I mean, someday it could deal, you know. But until now, I'm just trying to enjoy the ride while, while I'm on it right now. Damn right. Nice. And we talk a lot about with the WWE and other companies signing so much indie talent, kind of who's going to be the next big thing. And here at the Working Fans Podcast, at least I've been pushing for Jay Freddy. Well, we don't want to take up too much of your time tonight. We thank you very much for joining us. And before you go, can you kind of give us any upcoming dates where people can find you? Anything you want to plug? Absolutely. My uh, Instagram is uh, J underscore Freddy. Uh, Same with my Twitter, at J underscore Freddy. This Saturday, I'll be at Excite Wrestling in Binghamton. It'll be... uh, Myself and uh, Slick Wagner Brown, the uh, the Kowalski guys. It's another tag team I'm in. Obviously, him training under Killer Kowalski. You know, and me having the Kowalski rub. You know, it's and known each other for 15 years. You know, like we decided to combine as a team, and you know, we're a really good team clicking right now. We're going after the Excite Tag Team Championships. That's this Saturday. I will be on Beyond Wrestling Uncharted Territory on November 7th. So tune in for that, and then on. November 9th, I will be in Erie, Pennsylvania for Pro Wrestling Rampage. Jay, you're the man. Thanks a lot, bud. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. All right. Hey, Jay, have a great night. Guys, thank you for listening to the 531 here on YouTube this week. If you like what you hear, you can always find us on Anchor FM, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, and on the Apple Podcast where you can subscribe and also give us a five-star rating. We appreciate you listening. We want your feedback, 531, and if you agree with us, if you disagree with us, we also want you to let us know. And let us know what your 531 would be. Come up with a top five and let us know and we'll tell you why you're wrong. And in order for us to do that, please contact us on Twitter, we're at Fans Working, Facebook page, Working Fans Wrestling Pod, email WorkingFansWrestlingPod at gmail.com. It's very important that you actually contact us on these platforms because we want this to be your interactive place to talk wrestling.